So this is example seven in our partial fractions topic. This is the first example where we come across uh, a rational function which has an irreducible quadratic in its denominator. And there it is. It's an irreducible quadratic because we cannot factorize it into linear factors. We would normally try to find a pair of factors of two that add together to give you two, but we cannot do it. We can't factorize it, therefore we have to keep it in its current form. We call that an irreducible quadratic. So up until now, all our partial fractions have required us to have these little linear terms, and they make up the denominators of our partial fraction. So what happens in an example like this? Well, let's have a look. It does change our template, the way in which we set out our fractions. So if I write this out, first of all, let's have a look at what we need it to look like. So we've got an x plus 1 linear factor. So any time we have a linear factor, it still behaves as normal, x plus 1, and we're going to have a constant a above that, just like in the examples before. However, this second fraction is going to have to have a quadratic denominator. And because of that, what's going to happen is that we may end up with an x term in our numerator. And if there's an x term, we don't know what the coefficient of that is. It won't just be 1x. So we put a value b here, which is not a constant term technically anymore. It's going to be the numerator, the, going to be the coefficient of our x term. And we may still have a constant term, which we'll call c. So the shape of that second fraction is that we've got a numerator bx plus c all over x squared plus 2x plus 2, which looks slightly different from the partial fractions that were done before. And just to clarify that the x term in our numerator only occurs in these examples when we have an irreducible quadratic in our denominator. We can still multiply through, and everything else basically is the same as what we've come to do before. We multiply through by the denominator. And if we have a look at that, then on the left-hand side, as always, the whole denominator disappears as it were, it cancels out as we multiply through, and we're left with the numerator. If we have a look at what happens with the first fraction on our right-hand side, well, the x plus 1 cancels with the x plus 1, and so we're left with a multiplied by x squared plus 2x plus 2. And our second fraction, if we multiply through, then the two quadratic terms cancel out, and we are left with, now this time we're left with the bx plus c numerator, which is a term in its own right, so we need a bracket around that, multiplied by x plus 1. Do not write it like that, because that implies that only the c term there is multiplying by x plus 1. And that would be wrong. It's the whole value bx plus c, which is multiplied by x plus 1. So you need a bracket around bx plus c. Do not forget. So that's our equation that we're going to work with. And we do as we have then always done, which is we're going to try and simplify this so that we can solve for a, b, and c. One of the first things that we notice at the end here is that we have a factor x plus 1. So if we choose x equals negative 1, then we know that that value there is going to go to 0. The whole bx plus c uh, term is going to go to 0. So that's going to help us simplify it. So if x is negative 1, we're going to have 3 lots of negative 1 squared plus 2 lots of negative 1 plus 1 on the left. On the right-hand side, we're going to have a 
multiplied by negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 plus 2, and then we're going to have our zero term here. You can do more of that um, in your head. You don't have to necessarily write it out as fully the substitution like that, but I'm doing it just now just to make sure you understand where the negative ones are going. And it does sometimes help to make sure we don't make mistakes. So we've got on the left hand side, negative 1 squared is positive 1, so that becomes 3 minus 2 plus 1. And on the right hand side we've got a multiplied by negative 1 squared is still 1, minus 2 plus 2. On the left hand side, 3 subtract 2 plus 1 is 2. And on the right hand side here, uh, 1 minus 2 plus 2 is 1. So I've got a, which means that a is equal to 2. I've got the first of my uh, values here. So I want to try and then find one of the other ones. If you notice here, uh, again back up in the original equation, that our uh, b term here is multiplied by x. If I say x, you put a 0, then the b term will disappear. And now that we know what a is, we could probably work out what c is. So I am going to set x equal to 0. And we'll have a look and see what happens. If I substitute in on the left-hand side, obviously most of that is going to go to 0. Uh, my a term, let's have a look and see... For a, I'm not even going to write everything in here. The x squared plus every x term is zero, so I'm basically left with two multiplying by the a, and then I've got b times zero is zero. I've got c in my bracket here. We're just I'm looking back up at this whole thing. B x plus c. If x is zero, all we're left with there is c, and on the bracket next to it, I've just got a 1. Okay. So, simplifying all that, the left hand side I've got a 1 equals 2a multiple or plus c. I know that a is 2, so 2a is going to be 4. And by solving that in whatever way, subtract 4 from both sides, c is going to have a value negative 3. So we're now going to go back and think of how we're going to work out the value of b. Okay, so we're back at this equation here. What we could do is we could select um, some other value for x that we haven't used. So for instance, we could let x equal to 1. And we could substitute 1 in all along the way we would get an equation which has a, b, and c in it. And because we know what a and c are, we could work out b. However, I, I'm going to do, instead of that, I'm going to notice that the b term here, bx, if we were to multiply out this bracket here, would end up, if I multiply everything out, that first term is going to be bx squared. And that's going to be the only x squared term out of all of that expression. And if you notice back on the a term here, if I multiplied everything out there, I'm going to have an ax squared term. There's going to be other terms, x terms and constant terms, as there will be on the second one. But on the right-hand side, if I multiplied everything out, I would have 2x squared terms, ax squared, and later on, bx squared. And we know that if we add the ax squared plus the bx squared, it has to, on the left-hand side, be equal to the total x squared uh, term on the left, which would be 3. So, in this case, I'm going to equate the x squared terms. You don't have to do it this way. We could just say, when x equals 1, substitute it all in, and that would be fine. But I quite like this way, because it's a wee bit shorter as long as you can see where we're going with it. So on the left-hand side, our x squared term has the value 3. 
and we're going to just cherry pick the x squared terms on the right hand side which would be a x squared and then later on it's going to have a b x squared so we're just focusing on the x squared terms that came from that original equation we can drop the x squared terms i just wrote these in to remind us that we're dealing with x squared terms so in actual fact we're really just interested in the coefficients because we know when we're adding x squared terms it's really we're just adding the numbers in front of each of the, the terms so 3 is equal to a plus b we already know that a is 2 and substituting 2 in tells us that b has to have the value 1 so it can be quite a quick process if you can to reason that out by looking at the equation by inspection. I certainly wouldn't expect you to multiply everything out and do that, but um, if you if you have to do that, just go with the let x equals 1 and substitute it all in, because that would be certainly easier. So what have we found out? We have found out that a is 2, b is 1, and c is negative 3. So we're ready to form our partial fractions therefore let's finish with a flourish the original expression was 3x squared plus 2x plus 1 3x squared plus 2x plus 1 divided by x plus 1 multiplied by x squared plus 2x plus 2 we were saying our template was something over x plus 1 and something over x squared plus 2x plus 2. So the something over the x plus 1 was the letter A, and we know that that is now 2. And we had our plus, so on the right hand side, the B term is going to be in front of the x. So B is 1, so we'll just leave that as 1x or x. And the C terms are constant, which is negative 3, and therefore our partial fractions looks like that. Okay, we've got another uh, example coming up, example 8, which has a look at another uh, irreducible quadratic in the denominator. Uh, so if you have a look at that, and then we can keep practicing these types of rational functions.